Hello, and welcome to an explanation of how DD Scientific electrochemical lead-free oxygen sensors work. So let us start with an overview of what is inside the sensor. The sensor is a sealed box with a small hole at the top called a capillary that allows oxygen to enter the sensor. Inside the sensor, there are three electrodes. At the top is a sensing electrode manufactured from an electroactive metal catalyst which allows the first reaction, reduction of oxygen, to occur. In the middle of the sensor is the reference electrode, again a catalyst material but which is not designed to take place in any chemical reactions. At the bottom of the sensor is the final electrode, the counter electrode, which provides an opposing reaction to the sensing electrode and allows current to flow. In contact with each electrode internally are highly conductive wires known as current collectors which allow external access. Filling the sensor is an acidic medium known as the electrolyte, which allows ions to move within the sensor. The electrodes and current collectors are prevented from shorting by use of internal separation material known as insulators. The current collectors are welded to the sensor pins to allow electrical connection. On the rear face of the sensor is another small hole called the vent, which is critical to the operation of the sensor and should not be blocked for the sensor to work. So now let us talk about the chemical reactions which occur inside the sensor. As oxygen enters the sensor, it encounters the sensing electrode, where in the presence of hydrogen ions, also known as protons, and electrons, it is reduced to produce liquid water. The water is absorbed back into the electrolyte and can move freely around the sensor. At the counter electrode, water is broken up by a process known as electrolysis into electrons, hydrogen ions and the evolution of oxygen. The oxygen produced at the bottom of the sensor leaves it through the rear vent. The electrons which are produced at the counter electrode are able to travel through the current collector and counter pin into the external circuit and back up to the sensing electrode through the other current collector. There, they are available for the sensing electrode reaction. So in summary, at the sensing electrode, we have a chemical reaction called reduction, whereby oxygen is combined with protons and electrons to form water. At the counter electrode, water is hydrolyzed to produce oxygen, protons and electrons. This is the opposite reaction to what is happening at the sensing electrode. Therefore, the processes happening inside the sensor are purely catalytic, Nothing is consumed or produced, and the net effect is oxygen being driven through the sensor. This is why lead-free oxygen sensors are often referred to as oxygen pumps. As previously mentioned, the vent must be kept clear during use, or oxygen will build up inside the sensor, swamp the sensing electrode, and provide enhanced and inaccurate signals. The third electrode inside the sensor, the reference electrode, does not take part in any chemical reactions and is included only to provide a stable potential or voltage against which the sensing electrode potential can be held steady or latched. So now let us talk about how lead-free oxygen sensors are used and in particular how they work with electronic circuits. Lead-free oxygen sensors can only work if the voltage at which the sensing electrode is operating is below the voltage at which the reference electrode is working. The magnitude of this difference is 600 millivolts, and we'll now talk about how this voltage, also known as the sensor bias, is achieved. Here is an example of how a bias voltage can be achieved. We have a supply voltage of 5 volts, which is being regulated to provide a stable voltage of 2.5 volts. This voltage is then further split by use of a resistor network to provide a VREF of 2.5 volts and a virtual ground voltage of 1.9 volts, a difference of 600 millivolts. This 600 millivolts difference in potential is what allows the lead up free oxygen sensor to work. So now let's look at how the sensor's drive electronics are implemented. Using the supply voltages as shown in the previous slide, we provide a 2.5 volt reference voltage, VREF, to the reference electrode and a 1.9 volt virtual ground voltage to the sensing electrode. Thus, the sensing electrode is held at 600 millivolts below the reference electrode. 
The current produced by the sensor can be measured across the 100 ohm resistor as shown here. Using Ohm's law, the voltage measured is proportional to the current flow as I equals V divided by R. The current measured will be proportional to the oxygen concentration outside the sensor.